Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Citizens Bulletin. Know your role as an informed Pennsylvania citizen, brought to you by Americans for Prosperity. I'm Kim Kennedy, welcome you to the program. And our host today is State Director of Americans for Prosperity, Ashley Klingen Smith. Ashley, good morning. Good morning, Kim. Hi, everyone. Good to be back. Well, we're so glad that you're here. We, I know that you want to join in with us in wishing our listeners happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Absolutely. And as always, Ashley, we have a lot to say in a short amount of time. But before we get into our topic today, would you remind our listeners of your role with AFP and the mission of AFP here in Pennsylvania? Yes, absolutely. So I am the state director. I've been here about five and a half years. I've served in just about every capacity that you can on in a state chapter. So I started as a field director, which is in essence a community organizer. And I was the lone soldier in the whole state. So it was a pretty significant territory and have just kind of worked my way through several roles. I most recently was grassroots director and helped our whole team of engagement directors just be as successful as they could be and now serve as state director. And so what that means is I kind of evaluate the landscape in D.C. when it comes to members of our federal congressional delegation, all 18 members and our two U.S. senators, and then look at the landscape and potential for advancing good policy in Harrisburg, create a strategic plan, and then do our very best to work to advance some of those policy priorities that we've identified as being as being able to get to the governor's desk for his John Hancock. And so that's what's important because no matter how effective we are in moving things through the legislative agenda, at the end of the day, we've got to get his signature to make sure that laws and bills that we've been working so hard to get across the line actually become law. Moreover, we also are dedicated and committed to really ensuring cultural change in communities. And so that is why our work isn't just focused under the dome, but rather in communities. And our hope and prayer, no matter what the policy priority is, whether it's economic opportunity issues like tax reform or it's criminal justice reform, policies that affect communities and families, whatever they are, we always want pressure and influence to come from the grassroots, to come from the people of Pennsylvania. And so that is why we created tools like our I Volunteer portal so that folks are able to easily scale their voice by signing a letter or signing a petition to make certain that their members are hearing from them. Because at the end of the day, members, whether they're in the state house or state senate or in the U.S. house or U.S. senate, are the people's employees. And so they need to think of themselves that way. And the only way that we're able to ensure that's happening is if, if people are contacting them and sharing what their expectations are. So we're here to be kind of that conduit to help you be most effective in that pursuit. And that's what we're really dedicated to doing. Yeah, so that's what we do. And as always, if folks want information, want to get connected with one of our engagement directors up in Erie or Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, Scranton, or in the Philadelphia region, just shoot our general inbox a note, info, PA, at ASPHQ.org, and we'll get to you straight away. Very good. Thank you, Ashley. And we do encourage, we, we encourage our listeners to support AFP. And we'll talk at the end of the program how folks can get involved in AFP in 2020. And uh, But for now, we do have some top issues that we need to discuss, Ashley. What is most pressing today? Yeah, well, I thought it would be very timely to talk a little bit about regulatory reform and red tape reduction generally today. You know, we are so lucky to have a new chairman 
of the Senate Intergovernmental Operations Committee. That does not sound too terribly sexy, but they actually have a lot of power over some very important bills. And so I want to talk through some of that at a high level, also give you some bill numbers to be on the lookout for. But Doug Mastriano, Senator Mastriano, is the new chairman of this committee. And so we are excited that he actually we called the committee to order for the first time in, I think, two years, a couple of months ago, and passed out a bill that was called the Regulatory Review Act. And so they passed that out of committee. It passed the full Senate, and now it's over in the House. And the prayer is that we're going to be able to get Chairman Everett of the House State Government Committee to run that sometime at the beginning of next year. But there's a series of other bills. And what was so wonderful is that Chairman Mastriano was willing to hold a hearing on regulatory reform, red tape reduction, and really transparency generally before the end of this year. He had told me back in the spring, I'm going to do this before the end of 2019. And he delivered in such an awesome way last week. So on December 12th, a Thursday, he convened uh, several folks that provided testimony, as well as several members to talk through some of these issues. And so he hosted the hearing at Martin's Famous Pastry Shop which is the home of the potato roll, if folks have heard of that, but it's it's distributed all over Pennsylvania and then also in 38 countries, which is just so neat. And so we were actually able to hold the hearing there. And, you know, I think what was so fascinating is that one of the fourth generation owners, Tony Martin, actually testified on a panel. And he began his testimony by talking about the fact that they have been working with several agencies, such as PennDOT, DEP, the EPA, amongst others, for over four years to simply be able to move an entrance to their facility from one road to another. It would make the entrance safer for people passing on the roads, and it would just be all around more efficient for their business. That is still not come to fruition. They are still working through that process. And, you know, I couldn't help but think, we have defeated enemies in world wars faster than that. And so I don't think there is any more egregious an example or anecdote as Mr. Martin shared than that. And so I know that a lot of, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's gotten to a place where most entrepreneurs and business owners simply cannot tolerate that amount of money and time dealing with regulations and so there are some who simply go out of business because or it is to not worth. Yeah, or go out of state, exactly. And so what I just wanted to do is talk with listeners about kind of what is regulation, who are the players in this arena, and what are some examples of what good looks like from other states. And then, yeah, tell folks what they should do to help, to help ASP and help us get some of these bills across the aisle in both chambers, the House and the Senate, and then get them to the governor. So I think several people define regulations in different ways. But, you know, regulations really are rules, also known as administrative laws, that state agencies like DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, or the Pennsylvania Department of Education or a Department of Labor and Industry, rules that those agencies implement to achieve policy objectives. And what they do is they provide instructions or standards by which individuals, the public, must comply. So while some of those standards are important, too often these regulations are confusing and they're burdensome, and they have little regard 
with how they should really be put into practice. And so Mercatus Center from George Mason University describes regulations as kind of legal mandates that require or forbid people and companies to perform particular actions. And while policymakers love to pass new regulations, often in response to visible public problems, they are rarely inspired to remove rules once they're no longer needed. And so over time, regulations can smother an economy like a blanket over a campfire. One study uh, from Mercatus estimated that the total cost of regulation on the U.S. economy was $4 trillion in 2012 alone. That is, that is wild. And so here in Pennsylvania, we have about 153,000 regulatory restrictions. And so Mercatus actually quantified the PA code and said that it contained about 12.8 million words. So if you spent about 40 hours a week reading, it would take you 18 weeks to read the code. I'm not sure what else could be more overwhelming, but really that regulatory status quo imposes enormous costs. And so what we now know based on that is that we've got to do something about it. We've got to address it. And so what's really great is most recently under President Trump, the federal government is trying to ease the regulatory burden at the national level and so with agencies like the EPA. So the administration imposed a kind of one in, two out requirement on regulators and that's inspired action I think in other states for sure. In Ohio, Governor DeWine signed a two-year budget after really a hard-fought battle between legislators in July, between the legislators in the Ohio House and Ohio Senate. And so what that budget did was include a provision stating that for each restriction added, agencies must remove two others. So just like that federal one in, two out policy, in Ohio, it's going to be in place for four years. So that is is likely going to bring some much needed relief to Ohioans and other states are also following in that vein. So in 2018, Virginia created its own inventory of regulatory requirements and required a 25% cut at agencies involved in occupational licensing and criminal justice reform. And so Rhode Island set an expiration date for its entire code at the end of 2018, forcing agencies to review existing rules and refile those that they wanted to keep. And Rhode Island estimated 31% eliminated 31% of its rule volume in that process. So that's pretty significant. And I think the last state that's really worth mentioning is Idaho. They allowed their entire regulatory code to sunset on July 1st. So Governor Little's administration issued a new streamlined code to replace it eliminating 20% of its chapters in the process. So you had 31% elimination of rule volume in Rhode Island and 20% of the code's chapters in Idaho. This is huge. These are significant. And so we have the ability to certainly follow this momentum and I think um, jumpstart some good changes here in Pennsylvania. And so I'll go through some of the bills, but I just wanted to share a couple of the points from our testimony before that hearing on December 12th, if that's okay, Kim, if you have questions or if I'm being unclear. But I think that here in Pennsylvania, just to kind of illustrate what's going on and how regulatory accumulation and red tape can get out of control, consider that in Pennsylvania, 
There are 208 restrictions and regulations defining how the design and use of ladders should look. And 190 rules governing standards for consumer packages and containers. Naturally, some rules are necessary to ensure consumer safety. But just like the examples I just said, regulations can hardly be justified when we're talking that many for such a narrow commodity like a ladder or a consumer package or container. So some of the things I think that we are able to do have already, and that we are able to pass, have already passed the state house. So I'm going to go through those bills and just let people know what we've already passed through the House and what now, prayerfully, that Intergovernmental Operations Committee in the Senate is going to get out here in the first quarter of 2020, get out of committee so the full Senate can address this. So the first is House Bill 1055. And what that does is create an independent office of the repealer which will review existing regulations and implement that two out, one in standard for the creation of new rules. There's also a somewhat of a companion bill, Senate Bill 119, called the Red Tape Reduction Act, which orders a six-month review of the Pennsylvania Code for transparency of mandates and also implements that one in, two out model for new regulations. We have House Bill 806, Mm -hmm. which is our state version of the RAINS Act. And do you know what RAINS stands for? I don't know if everyone knows that. I feel like I should sometimes say that. So (laughs) RAINS is an acronym. It stands for Regulations from the Executive in Need of Scrutiny. So what we're saying is, and what the idea behind, the underlying idea behind a policy like the RAINS Act is to say that, hey, any kind of edict that's coming down from an executive level agency like the DEP um, or, you know, the Department of Labor and Industry has got to be vetted by the people. And how do we do that? Through the legislature. So what this would say is the General Assembly would be required to vote on any economically significant regulation defined as having an effect on the state or a municipality or the business community of $1 million or more annually. I really think this has the ability to be quite transformative um, and really serve as a much needed check on the administrative state. And so this is going to be a really significant focus of ours. Next, House Bill 430, that gives the General Assembly the ability to repeal any regulation that's currently in effect through concurrent resolution. So the House would have to pass the resolution, the Senate would have to do it, and then it it could be repealed. And so again, just another check on that administrative state. House Bill 509 reforms the administration of permits in the Commonwealth. So the bill is called Permit Transparency, and it would just allow folks to track where their permit application is in the process and allow folks to, I think, really avoid some of the headaches of constantly contacting agencies to see where their permit is in the process. And then House Bill 762 would require agencies to appoint a regulatory compliance officer. And that would be a designated employee, let's just say at the DEP, that would serve the regulated community with advisory opinions and assistance in kind of non-compliant scenarios before they could ever levy a penalty or fine. And that is something that the business community, I think, would benefit from so much and what I think is more than fair. 
And so I know we've talked about the Fighting Chance Act before, but as I talked about a little bit earlier, in Virginia, they passed this in 2018. And so we had an ability to pass this next year. It's House Bill 995. And this is what creates that pilot program for red tape reduction. So it would reduce the regulations in the Board of Probation and Parole and the Bureau of Professional and Occupational Affairs by 25%. And at the conclusion of that pilot program, PA would assess the outcomes and then make recommendations to expand the program across other executive branch agencies. So that is the loan bill that is still in the House committee. And so we're working really hard to figure out a way to get bipartisan support for that in committee. Um, it's actually has two sponsors, a Republican and a Democrat, which is awesome. Um, but we're just trying to get a little bit more sign off on that to get that out of committee. But all the other bills I mentioned pass through the House passed out of committee. And so now they're in Senator Mastriano's committee. And I believe we're going to be able to get these moving. My prayer is in the first quarter of, of 2020. Oh, and wow. so that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, that is some, that's some great news for the end of the year. Great Christmas present to the people of Pennsylvania. And also I would yeah. take a challenge to our listeners in 2020 because, actually, I think that you could use some assistance from Pennsylvania citizens to help move this legislation along. Can you tell them, us, how that can happen? Absolutely. So we're going to be having a lot of meetings and booking a lot of meetings with members about these bills in quarter one. And so if you are comfortable with accompanying us to a legislative office, either in the district or at the Capitol, shoot that info PA at ASPHQ inbox a note and let us know because we'd love to have you join us. Also, there is a petition on our website, on our iVolunteer website, called Cut the Red Tape. And we would really like it if you would sign that. So just head to americansforprosperity.ivolunteers.com and sign that Cut the Red Tape petition. Also, there is an, a, a commission in Pennsylvania called the Independent Regulatory Review Commission. And they are the entity that rules from Pennsylvania agencies must be reviewed by before they can take effect. And there are always public comment periods where folks can submit their comments to agencies. And so I always recommend doing that. They have some really great brochures on how to make that an easy, easy process and clarify what you need to do in order to submit comments. It also tells when and publishes when they are holding meetings so that you can go and actually publicly comment. And then they also have a website where you can track agencies that interest you to learn when they are proposing new rules. So that website is IRRC, so Independent Regulatory Review Commission, irrc.state.pa.us. And so I strongly urge folks to go there. It is fairly, I think, um, it's gotten more user-friendly over the years. So head there. And as always, we can also help in and be a guide for you in trying to find information. But, um, but please know that there is a really bright future on the horizon for a more balanced and cost-effective regulatory culture right here in Pennsylvania. It's going to spark the creation of new businesses, making our state what it should be, which is competitive and prosperous. So we have got to keep reducing these government-imposed barriers so our Commonwealth residents can really reach their full potential. And that's what we have always been committed to doing, and that's what we'll continue to fight for. And so your partnership is critical. As a grassroots organization, we really need you folks. So please go and make sure that you are getting plugged in to um, all of our capabilities. Excellent. 
Ashley, thank you again for another well thought out, well planned out, well presented update on the state of Pennsylvania. Listeners, please use this information and to find out more and keep up with the policy updates of Americans for Prosperity here in Pennsylvania, go to their website, which Ashley, that is? Yes, AmericansforProsperity.org. Very good. Thank you so much. And again, we wish our listeners and Ashley, you and everybody at Americans for Prosperity, a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Yes, thank you so much. You too. Bye, everyone. Thank you, listeners. Make it an excellent day.